Well, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Dana of thesaleofarmhouse.com and today I'm really excited because this is a long-awaited video for some of you guys. I'm going to share with you what to actually knit for babies. I was never the one to write up a song for just anyone. I, I was always the one to find myself lost in all conversations. Oh, cause I've always been told that things will unfold if you keep on waiting. But then you came along and proved me all wrong I was so mistaken Cause you glue all the pieces back together Yeah, you, so, you take a while ago I went to a friend's baby shower And I had knit her this hand knit blanket Thinking that this would be this like one of a kind special thing And it was But she also opened maybe 12 other hand knit blankets along with mine and so it really made me think about what advice would I give to myself six years ago when I was having my first? Would I be really excited about just knitting tons of blankets? Would I had wished I knit different things, maybe kind of branched out a little bit? Would I have thought I was kind of a hoarder when I realized that we now have at least 12 blankets between my four kids? And I realized that it's a little bit of all of them. I feel like I am a hoarder in some ways and then in some ways I feel like it was cool to try something different and so I'm going to tell you all of the fails of knitting for babies and all of the kind of necessities and then everything in between whether you are expecting or whether you're going to become a grandma or your friend's having a baby, you're going to have a niece or a nephew, that kind of thing. Everyone knows someone who's going to have a baby or just had a baby. And so I really hope that this video helps you out. Like I said, I've done this four times now. And so I've kind of seen a lot of the ins and outs of what actually works and what was kind of just a little bit extra fluff. And there's nothing wrong with fluff, but when that's all you knit for yourself, for example, my second, that's all I knit and I didn't really have those timeless, easy to care for pieces, it made it a little bit harder just jumping into a new season of life being a mom anyway. And so I'm just gonna chat with you guys about that. So first of all, I cannot say enough about knitting for your baby when you're pregnant or knitting for someone who's about to have a baby because I feel like just by knitting something for that unborn baby, you create a bond with them. And so every time I was knitting stitches on this blanket for my friend, I was just thinking, you know, just pouring my love into it and just thinking about her and just what her baby's gonna be like. And the same was true for when I was expecting. It just creates this bond with someone you haven't met yet. And especially if it's not your baby, it's sometimes hard to form that bond. Um, obviously mother and baby are having a bond because it's the baby's growing inside of her. But when it's not you carrying the baby, you're kind of like, well, how do I bond with, with this baby? How do I connect with this mom who's doing something I'm not doing? I can't relate. And so I really do think that knitting something for them is just the sweetest way to give someone a little bit of your talent and your skill and just give them this really special thing that they're gonna cherish forever. Now, I have gone through postpartum anxiety. I have gone through postpartum depression. I was even having some anxiety and depression while I was pregnant in some of my pregnancies. And like I said, the benefits of just knitting for this little human that you're growing are incredible and get you through very hard times. And I can't, I just, I can't say enough about knitting for babies. So what I'm going to say, please don't take as, you know, new moms don't want anything knit for their babies. They don't want things knit for themselves because that's 100% not true. Nothing can replace something hand knit or handmade. And um, yes, so I wanna make sure that I say that and that you know that I truly believe from the heart that knitting for someone who's expecting or for that baby is just irreplaceable. So before I give you the list of like the can't live without things to knit for babies, I do have a couple tips for knitting for a baby. The first one being in the yarn. And that means just being careful what kind of yarn you choose because some babies will have allergic reactions to um, anything that's made from animals, animal fiber, so wool, that kind of thing. There are a lot of wool allergies out there. Thankfully, none of my kids had that yet. Uh, but yeah, just being careful. It is always safest to go with like a soft acrylic 
or a wool and acrylic blend. And I will share in just a minute what my absolute favorite baby yarn is. But another reason to be careful what kind of yarn you're using is because like I said, new moms, especially very, very new moms, first baby, are going into a new phase of life full of sleepless nights and major mom brain. And I've noticed that even when I've knit these for myself, wool blankets or wool sweaters or anything that requires a thought before you throw it in the washing machine are not the best choices for a baby. And the reason is moms are really tired. New moms are really tired and they're not always thinking do I need to hand wash this? Does this need to lay dry to flat before they throw something in the wash? You know, if a mom has a bunch of sheets and burp cloths that are covered and spit up and she just needs to do the laundry, I know I, for one, I'm not as careful about looking through the whole basket as I should be because rightfully so, we're so tired being up all night. So that is another reason that maybe just going with an acrylic or something that's not gonna shrink or felt is maybe a little bit of a better choice in especially that newborn phase. As they get a bit older, now that's a better time to do it. So say you're making a sweater for a one-year-old or a toddler, that kind of thing, which is my second tip. And that is to look beyond the couple newborn months. You know, months zero to three are considered newborn, and a lot of moms get given diapers for this time frame, clothes, the cutest hats and that kind of thing. And I get it because little newborn socks are really cute. Everything that's newborn sized is tiny, it's quick to knit, it's really cute. And I think most of us knit that thinking that it's gonna be extremely helpful because you'll need it right away. And that is true. But I think another thing that isn't always thought about is looking a little bit ahead. So well, this baby might have a ton of little tummy time size blankets, you might want to go bigger and knit um, a toddler twin size bed blanket or hats that are going to fit a one year old, that kind of thing. Uh, because like I said, new moms can sometimes get a little bit overwhelmed with how much to use right then. And I can say from experience that especially in the first, I'd say three to four weeks, I can't remember what my kids wore from day to day. I know they wore clothes, but I was a walking zombie and I literally don't remember like the special newborn outfits I put them in. Most of them got dirty and just thrown in the laundry and every day was a blur. And so those special really cute newborn outfits that I really wanted them to wear, I wanted to take pictures of them in, there it's just a blur, honestly. It is a blur because Days move into nights and nights blend with the next day because you're up every two hours feeding them. So another reason besides just a lot of things are gifted for that newborn time period is that it will be not appreciated more because obviously a mom being given these or if you're knitting these for your own kid, you're going to appreciate it when you're given it, but I guess used and utilized because I can say I meant to get cute tummy time, or not even tummy time, but cute pictures of our fourth baby and um, on this blanket that my mom knit, and I never got around to doing it. And he is three months old now, and I have just been able to start being like, oh yeah, like I have cute stuff I can style this baby in because it really is. It's a flurry, it's a blur. And so that's my second tip is to just kind of think outside of the newborn phase and think about what might this mom want when the baby's a little bit bigger or into being a toddler when they're not being given as many gifts. And then my third tip, which I will give some ideas of how to, I guess, have a solution for this in a minute, is to look ahead. So for example, if you're going to be having a summer baby or you know someone who's due in spring, I have an April baby, it can be hard to knit for them. They're not really wearing hats or anything like that. So instead of just um, giving up and not knitting anything at all, because you're like, well, it's a summer baby, what are they gonna do? Looking ahead to that next fall, to that next winter, again, from the last tip, even the next fall or the next winter, that kind of thing, what can you knit that is gonna be a special thing for them during that time? So for my April baby, I didn't knit her any hats 
I didn't do any sweaters, anything like that. She is the third girl that I had, so she had a lot of hand-me-downs anyway, but I knit her a couple of very special blankets, and that was pretty much all uh, that I knew I would be giving her right away. And so just being able to be patient and know that she will get to use the things that I knit for her, just it wasn't gonna be right away necessarily because she was born right before summertime. <laughs> Okay, so what the heck do we knit for babies? There's a lot of patterns out there. Um, I don't want you to think, like I said, like don't knit for babies because it's hard to care for the items and wash them and new moms are too tired to put in their babies in anything because that's not true at all. So what do we knit for them? So I have a couple ideas of things that I've knit for my four kids and then just like, like I said, like friends, kids, and so the first one I'm gonna say is a timeless thing, something that can be a hand-me-down even after your kids, someone else can use and love, and that are hats. So newborn hats, like I said, going up sizes beyond what they're gonna fit in right when they're babies. Hats are so helpful because every baby's head size is different. So I've had babies with bigger heads than others, and some babies are preemies, they have to have even smaller hats. So really just thinking about knitting hats in a variety of sizes, a lot of pattern designers will write a pattern that's for different sizes. So for example, my hat patterns go from zero months to I think, I think I have it until like four year old or something like that. So that you can have the hat pattern and if you wanted to, you can knit the newborn size, the six month size, all that. Um, obviously skip like the summer months but you know what I mean like you don't know what size your baby's head is going to be until the baby is born and you might have knit a newborn hat and it might be too big for them or it might be too small for them so having a couple different options is the best way to really know that you're gonna have a hat that fits all right what's in it baby number two again a timeless classic are baby blankets so this I feel like is where my mind always goes to when I know someone's expecting or when I'm expecting is like, oh, well now we get to knit a little blanket for them. And I think the best advice I have for knitting baby blankets besides being careful what kind of yarn is to think outside the box. So there are other size blankets you can make besides just like a standard tummy time sized car seat blanket. And um, I, know that you can turn most blankets into a lovey. So a lovey is like a little square that usually has some sort of little animal or something like that on it so that the little baby can kind of snuggle it as soon as they're able to hold things. My three month old cannot hold anything yet, but something that they can hold and snuggle all the way up till there are toddlers or anything like that. Um, and if you're using a pattern that's too big, again, just scale down the size of the, of the blanket and you just add on your little your little uh, creature. <laughs> um, and then also, I kind of mentioned before, you can go twin-sized blanket um, that'll fit a twin-sized bed. You can do uh, tummy time blankets, I feel like are a little smaller than like a car seat stroller blanket. Because car seat stroller blankets, I at least, the ones that I use for that, are the at least big enough where I can throw it over the top of the car seat or throw it over the where the stroller, um, you know, flaps meet. So like to cover the gap of cold air coming in. So tummy time blankets might be a little bit smaller. Like I said, like quick Google search will tell you the different sizes of blankets there are out there. So there's a lot of blanket sizes out there and um, just some unique different ways to think about knitting a blanket for someone. So my third tip is to look at the seasons or look at holidays of when your baby's going to be born or also when you might be wanting to announce to people that you're expecting. So for example, in just like the hat category, there are really cute hats out there for Christmas time. You can make like the cute little stocking hats. Um, I have a pattern for the Santa hat. It's called the Wren hat. Um, I know Josie from p e Knits does a really cute like pumpkin hat and you can knit a hat whether it's gonna be like this is me introducing my baby to the world in this pumpkin hat and it's October or if you find out you're expecting and you're gonna do like a 
a picture to tell your friends and stuff on Facebook. You could do a really cute picture using that. And it just goes with the seasons, goes with the holidays. And um, it's a cute little memento to have after you have the baby because it has kind of a special meaning for that. Which is my fourth tip, and that is to knit something that isn't necessarily functional, but it is fun. And so an example for that would be um, a newborn photo shoot prop or something that you know you're gonna pretty much have them wear one time for one holiday and that's it. So for example, when I was pregnant with my second daughter, I knit her this sweater that took a really long time. It was like my first dive into cable knitting and it was actually really hard. I mean, blood, sweat, and tears into this sweater. She wore it one time. It like barely fit her. Like I said about, you know, newborns, you don't know what size they're gonna be. And that's okay. She wore it one time. I got a really cute picture of her and her sister in it that I get to keep forever. And just remember that moment. And it didn't make the sweater any less special because she didn't like wear it every day for her life. You know, it was that one moment, that one special memory. And I still have the sweater, I still have the photo, and it's very special to me. But like, don't be afraid to knit something. Put your time and your energy into something that isn't gonna get a lot of use because those are still special. They're special moments that helps really celebrate the, you know, expecting a baby part of it all. All right, tip number, I think we're on five, is to look to the nursery. So there's a lot you can knit when it comes to decorating a nursery. You can knit wall hangings, rugs, there's like the cool little ottoman poof things to have by the rocking chair, um, all sorts of things. My mom once knit a really cool like fuzzy blanket that we just put on the dresser of my daughter's, um, put on the dresser in my daughter's room, tongue twister, and it didn't have any purpose, but it was really cute. And it matched her room, which was like a secret garden style thing. And it was like fairy colors. Um, another thing is that you can knit, or if you don't want to knit it, you can just tie pieces of yarn together and make like the wall macrame or a wall hanging or something like that to go in the nursery. And if you're not sure what the theme of the nursery is or the colors, whether you haven't decided or it's for someone else and you're not sure, think smaller instead of bigger. So especially if you're going to gift something to someone who's expecting, maybe don't do like hand knit curtains or a big rug or something that's gonna be like a big piece in this room, especially if you haven't checked with the person who's expecting and you don't know like what their vision is for that room, I guess because it can be awkward. They're either you're gifted this big thing and now they are kind of, you know, it's awkward if they don't put it up, but it's not their favorite if they do put it up. So thinking smaller, like I said, like the really cute thing to put on the dresser, a little wall hanging, um, like mobiles. Those are so cute to have like little crochet mobiles. Um, but yeah, looking to the nursery and just coming up with some, some cool different ideas there. All right, tip number six, I think we're on number six, is to think about siblings and family photos, or not even photos, but just think about the siblings and the family. And by that, I mean, think about what would be cute that might match older siblings, whether it's something they already have. For example, all three of my kids all have one of these Santa hats that I was talking about, and then when I was expecting my fourth, I knit him one. That way, when we went to the Christmas tree farm, they all could be matching and I could have the cute little photo and he just, it looked like he matched, you know? He looked like he belonged in our family already right away as a, he was only like a couple months old at the time. So thinking about something that can match the siblings and just bring like a little feeling of togetherness. And then another really good tip, especially as a grandma or especially as somebody whose friend's gonna have a baby is if you're going to knit something for the baby, it's kind of cool to knit something that also matches it or goes with it, like the the big sister, little sister, big brother, all that kind of thing. Bring that when you bring the baby gift. So instead of just knitting a hat that says little bro, you could knit a hat that says little bro for the baby and then also knit a hat that says big sis for the big sister. That creates a bond for the older sister who's about to have her world rocked that a little baby's coming to join the family. 
and it just, it creates a bond and it also creates a bond with the grandma, grandma who knit this because instead of you coming and bringing a gift just for baby and then big sister's feeling kind of sad and down, she feels like special because you also remembered her. And then she's just, she's that much more excited to meet her new baby brother. Okay, baby knitting tip, possibly seven, is to knit some baby sweaters and socks because they're small, they're cute, they go very fast, and they're oftentimes things that knitters, if they haven't done it yet, are scared to try. So try to remember back, if you've already knit sweaters or socks, try to remember back to your very first time knitting a pair of socks or a sweater. You were probably a little bit nervous, a little scared. It probably seemed like sleeves and doing heels were gonna be really hard. At least that's how I felt before I ever did one. And so trying it on something small that's gonna take quick and therefore if you are messing up, it's easy to rip out and try again. It's kind of a good opportunity to try that new skill that you haven't done yet. And like I said, it, it goes fast. And then I think by trying it on something small, you're going to end up liking knitting sweater, sweaters and socks because that's how I was terrified to start. And then once I did it for my kids, that's all I want to knit now. And then baby knitting tip number eight. It's kind of random, kind of goes with the family sibling thing, but that's to knit some Christmas stockings. I am actually currently working on knitting a set of family stockings that all kind of go together. They are designed in similar patterns, I guess. They all have the same yarn and they have the same colors and they just, they go together. And I never really felt like we were ready to knit stockings until we, you know, had our last baby. But you might be the kind of person who is starting their family for the first time now get ahead of the game because if you suddenly find yourself needing to knit six stockings and realizing that it's going to take like two years, um, it might feel a little overwhelming. But if you start now, you can already have a couple stockings done. And then as you add to your family, if you do, you can just knit more stockings. And I just think it's so cool. They're, you know, just a classic timeless thing to have, especially at Christmas time when we're thinking about all things nostalgic. And, um, if you haven't started knitting Christmas stockings for your family, like me, I'm like that much into my first stocking, then um, I don't know, just thinking the feeling of how good it's gonna feel when you see all of them hanging from the fireplace or hanging from the stairs and realizing that like you knit that and it represents everyone in your family and I think that's a really cool and special feeling. So that's it, that is all the things that I really think Anyone should knit for a baby, anyone who's expecting or you know someone who's expecting. Like I said, there's a lot of other things even within those categories. You could go crazy, you could spend weeks and weeks looking for patterns, but those I think are just the basic necessities of knitting for a baby. So you've knit your things. Now, how do you take care of your baby knits? So like I said, it all comes down to the yarn. You really have to read the labels of the yarn that you use. Most acrylic, you know, you can stick in the washing machine and dryer. Wool, you can, you know, check your labels about superwash wool and um, whether you can carefully put it in the washing machine. I'm always still super nervous when it comes to any kind of wool. Um, cotton, I don't want to shrink anything. So like I said, just check your yarn labels. If you need to learn how to read a yarn label, I have a video I will put um, in the description and up above so that you can learn how to read your, your yarn label if you need to know the washing instructions for all that. Okay, and I said I would cover this early on in the video, so what do you knit when you're having a warm weather baby? I have, let's see, I have a fall baby, a winter baby, a spring baby, I have two fall babies. <laughs> That fourth, that fourth always gets forgotten. I have two fall babies, a winter baby and a spring baby. So when I had my baby in April, I was kind of stumped on what to knit for her. But like I said, look ahead to the coming cold season or even the next year season about what you might want to knit for her then. Another thing that is always good any time of year is a tummy time blanket. Um, 
I would say maybe stay away from blankets that are gonna cover the baby because it is it's really hot anything that is gonna be for decorating the nursery that is perfect for knitting a, a summer baby or a warm weather baby and then the last thing that I have always found really helpful are just washcloths like crazy find the softest yarn you can find and knit like a lot of washcloths because babies get messy and they need to be washed a lot and so I think that's just you know something every mom needs and the very last thing what is the best yarn for baby knitting there's a lot of opinions out there everyone likes their own different thing for me personally my very favorite yarn for knitting for babies is lion brand Woolies thick and quick and the reason for that is it's big and chunky you can make projects really quickly it is i believe about 70 percent wool and then the rest is acrylic and so this wool acrylic blend makes it really easy to care for like i said less worrying about what you're gonna shrink or felt in the washing machine and that's always good so there's a ton of different colors you can go run to michael's and joann's you can probably find it online on amazon it's everywhere so i think just finding something that's accessible and easy to care for and you know lots of colors means you have lots of different options for whatever you want to make so that's always been my go-to especially for baby blankets i've also knit little baby sweaters with that, if I'm doing like a chunky knit sweater, you can make a lot of cool like socks for babies, especially socks that go over kind of as slippers. They go over another pair of socks in the really cold weather. So yes, that's my favorite baby yarn. I know kind of a weird answer. It's probably not, you know, it's you're not gonna find it in the baby section at Michael's or Joann's, but it's my favorite. It's actually very soft. In fact, the very softest color, and I've heard this from a lot of other mom knitters, the very softest color of that is the charcoal. And it has little bits, we think, little bits of like cotton or something kind of spun into it also, and that makes it extra soft for some reason, I don't know, but that's like a hidden gem in the Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick world. So I hope you liked this video. I hope it was at least helpful and um, give you some ideas of what you want to go and knit if you are expecting. If you are, congratulations. Um, or if you're knitting for someone else, I hope it gave you some ideas of what would be helpful to give them as a gift versus what's just like another thing they're going to get or, you know, going to add stress of how do I not shrink grandma's sweater and make her sad. <laughs> So thank you guys for watching. Um, if you like this, please like the video and subscribe and I will put out some more videos just like this. And um, I will see you guys next time.